There's a reason to keep fighting against the powers that be, because no matter the setbacks or the years it may take, you can win. Remember when we introduced you to Gerald Markowitz and David Rosner? They're public health historians who never quit even when the giants of industry try to silence them. Their book, Deceit and Denial, for example, told how chemical companies concealed the truth about toxins in our food, water, and air. The companies responded with a vicious attack to discredit them and failed. They were targets again when their most recent book, Lead Wars, The Politics of Science and the Fate of America's Children, warned that kids can still be harmed by lead. Scientists now say that it is very likely there is no safe level of lead, that any amount of lead in a child's body, in a child's blood, uh, you know, causes a variety of neurological and intellectual problems. The message really should be is we need to really think of lead as one symbol, one symptom of this much larger problem of the pollution of our children, pollution of their lives, uh, the pollution of all of us uh, from a whole host of toxic materials that we are, we've grown accustomed to using. Markowitz and Rosner are often called as expert witnesses for the prosecution, including one lawsuit in Rhode Island that went to trial in 2005. Decaying paint left a deadly toxic mess in Rhode Island homes. The state attorney general demanded that the paint companies be held responsible for cleaning it up. Our documents showed that they had known about what they were creating. They had known that children would be poisoned. They were discussing children dying as early as the 1920s and 30s. Uh, and yet they had created this huge environmental mess of millions and millions of pounds on the walls of Rhode Island, all of which was waiting to poison future generations. And that they had done nothing about it, they continued to mark it, and that's really, I think, enraged the jury. And we were thrilled, just thrilled, when at the end of this trial, the jury came back and for the first time in lead industry lawsuits, they held three lead companies responsible for cleaning up the mess in the form of lead paint on the walls of houses throughout uh, Rhode Island. But two years later, that groundbreaking decision was overturned by the state Supreme Court. Yet when Markowitz and Rosner spoke with us last spring, they were hopeful that a similar lawsuit in California might succeed where Rhode Island had failed. The Supreme Court of Rhode Island had said um, this can't go under, there is no standing in future generations to get damages from these companies because they haven't been damaged yet. Until the kids are damaged, you can't actually sue. Uh, and California has said that absolutely, public health law is all based upon preventing disease. All regulations are in order to prevent future damage. Therefore, it can go forward in California. And go forward it did against more stiff opposition from the industry that denied ever having deliberately sold a harmful product. And yet, documents discovered by Rosner and Markowitz dating back as far as 1900 showed otherwise, including one company's admission that lead paint was a deadly cumulative poison. Unbelievably, the industry would go on to advertise that it was safe for children. And they show these ads in which children are painting their toys, painting their cabinets, painting their walls, painting their furniture with a poison. At the same time when in their own internal documents they're saying we have these examples, we have, we're being attacked because children and babies are getting poisoned by lead on their cribs. Finally last month, success. That historical record helped convince a California Superior Court Justice who wrote in his decision that in the 1920s, scientists from the Paint Manufacturers Association reported that lead paint used on the interiors of homes would deteriorate and that lead dust resulting from this deterioration would poison children and cause serious injury. The companies just never bothered to warn the public. And even though lead was banned from paint back in 1977, the industry continues to deny accountability and has defeated some 50 lawsuits nationwide. The California judge ruled that three companies must pay $1.1 billion to remove lead paint in some 5 million homes. The companies will appeal. No surprise, 
to Gerald Markowitz and David Rosner. You know, in our lifetime, we have seen the abandonment of the commitment to uh, try to help those who are most vulnerable in our society. And instead of that commitment today, we ask, how much does it cost? And by that, we mean, how many dollars does it cost? We don't ask, what does it cost in terms of the health of our children? What does it cost in terms of the uh, futures of our children and of our society? So take a lesson from these two citizens who keep fighting for that future against the might of greed and power. Don't give up. Fight on. You just might win.